They were having a great time. They'd seen the pyramids and they were on a boat headed up to Luxor. And as the boat was pulling into Luxor, Stephanie texted me and said that Tom had uh, developed abdominal pain and was unable to eat and uh, she was worried that he developed food poisoning. Um, she then texted me back and said, uh, the pain is going through to his back, could this be pancreatitis? Um, what should I do? And I said, you need to get him to a hospital. The last thing you need is pancreatitis in the middle of Egypt. It's an organism we have a lot of respect for now. So after a little over a week in Germany, Stephanie was able to work with people here to get him flown to UCSD. And uh, he was uh, hospitalized here at UC San Diego just before Christmas. I wasn't ready to let you go. And I came to you and I held your hand and I said, honey, they're doing everything that they can do. There's nothing that can kill this bug. So if you want to fight, you need to fight. But do you want me to kind of pursue some alternative therapies and we'll leave no stone unturned? Around that time, a colleague of ours who's at UCSF said that a friend of hers had been treated with phage therapy and flew to Tbilisi, Georgia, where she had this miraculous cure. And I thought, wow, that sounds kind of far out. But wait, I remember learning about phages when I was an undergrad at the University of Toronto. So I thought, wow, and I looked it up and I saw that it wasn't licensed and it certainly wasn't FDA approved, yet there were some papers saying that this was a promising area for the future. So I wrote Chip Schooley an email and I said, what do you think about phage therapy? And he said, what an interesting and intriguing idea. If you can help identify some phages that are gonna be reactive against his isolate, I'm gonna give it a whirl. We set on a phage hunt took just a couple weeks, but an international effort of researchers and people at the Navy Medical Research Unit came together to make this happen. We couldn't have done it without the UCSD team. What they literally mean are bacteria, phage, they eat bacteria. And these are small viruses that uh, are ubiquitous. We're loaded with bacteria phage and on any given day there's a dance going on in our GI tracts of bacteriophage attacking bacteria. In the early part of the 20th century, there were a lot of efforts in France and what became the former Soviet Union to use these organisms as therapeutic agents in people with difficult to treat infections. Toward the late 30s and early 40s, there was less interest in this in the West uh, because antibiotics began to emerge and people in the West thought antibiotics would be able to take care of our problems with bacterial infection. There had not been a lot of experience with treating people with bacteriophage and, and almost none giving it intravenously uh, in the U.S. So we relied on some of the literature from Soviet Union. A lot of it was really being worked out kind of on a first patient basis as we went using a combination of the previous literature, our own intuition about how these phage would circulate and advice from people who'd been thinking about it for a long time. Within about 48 hours, he woke up and turned to his daughter and said, I love you. Had there been phages available in the course of my illness when I first got ill, I wouldn't have been nearly as sick as it turned out I was. But there's a lot of interest in bacteriophage therapy. It's been gradually emerging over the last year or two as efforts to develop more traditional antibiotics have not really made the progress people had hoped. Bacteriophage have been kind of brought back off the shelf as a potential new approach to therapy. Now, they're not simple to use. You have to develop a cocktail for each patient's own isolate. They seem to be relatively safe to give, but uh, they're gonna be difficult to develop from the, both the research perspective and also from the regulatory perspective. Now the good news is we have awfully good tools now to do this, robotics and much more sophisticated molecular tools that enable this to be done. And 10 or 15 years ago it would have been impossible to contemplate uh, doing this. And so I think although there's a lot of research to be done, I think there are gonna be a lot of clinical applications where uh, this approach to therapy may be very beneficial to patients. You can't emphasize enough how much, well, I believe, that phages really can change how we treat people. 
in an economical way. So I see the third world and other places benefiting as much as we do. I mean, in my case, you know, I can't tell you how much it costs to take care of me, much more than, you know, I would like to believe. But if this can be done cheaply and, and really low tech way, we can save millions of lives. And so it's, I think, the future of medicine.